Hello everybody and welcome back to part 5 of our character setup video. In the last video we added our weapon inventory and we made it so we can cycle through our weapons and we can select our different weapons and stuff like that. In this video we're going to make the weapons actually shoot. So this is going to be a fun one. We're going to use the different weapon types like a shotgun, a burst weapon, an automatic weapon. We're going to use different impact effects, different muzzle flashes. So this is uh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, first let me tell a little fix for the weapons names over here. Uh, if I cycle through them you see them jump around the screen a little bit. They're not nicely aligned in one place. So first we're going to open our player HUD. And if we select the vertical box over here inside our weapon info we want to make sure we set this to fill. And if we try again once more now you notice the weapon names just stay nicely aligned in one spot and they won't jump around over the screen so it's just a little touch and a little fix I wanted to show you. So let's close this down and let's jump into creating our weapon shooting. First we're going to add some stuff into our infrastructure again so let's open this up and let me scroll this down. So we're going to add variables again. The first one we're going to add is a spread, and that's going to be float. The next one is called rechamber. So I need to actually select it before I change it to rechamber. And this one is going to be a boolean. Next we're going to add our rechamber time. This one is going to be a float, and the next one is going to be a float as well, and we're going to call this the max total range. The next variable we're adding is called muzzle socket. This one is going to be a name variable, and then we're going to add the fire sound. We're going to set this up to be a sound wave object reference. So look for sound wave. No. Sound wave. And select the object reference over here, like so. The next one is going to be our muzzle flash. And this one is going to be a particle system object reference. So look for particle system. And once again select the object reference over here. And the last one we're going to add right now is our impact FX. Come on, I can't type anymore. Impact FX and that's also going to be a particle system, so that's fine. Let's put in some default values over here. I'm going to set the spread to something like 0 0.3. The max total range is default of 4000. And that should do it for now, so let's save and close this down. And we're going to go into our data table and we're going to enter some stuff in here. So first the muzzle socket. At this stage we're going to use the same muzzle for all three weapons because we're using the same animations. At a later stage in the videos we're going to look at adding different animations and using different muzzle sockets so that's why we have the option to change it over here. So right now we're going to put muzzle underscore zero one into all three of those. So for the primary, the secondary and the rifle enter muzzle zero one. Now I'm going to set the spread for the secondary weapon to 1.5 because that's a shotgun so we want to increase the spread a little bit and we're also going to enter our muzzle flashes so let me resize this a bit and go to the paragon folder over here in the effects folder you find some particle systems you can use so I'm going to go to the primary FX the standard muzzle flash, I'm going to select it over here and then I'm going to click the little arrow and it's going to fill it in. So I'm going to use this muzzle flash for the primary and for the rifle. And I'm going to use the plasma shot hit world 
for the impact effects so click the little arrow and I'm going to do the same for the primary put the hit world into the impact effects for the secondary I'm going to use different particle systems I'm going to use the spread shot ones so open this folder I'm going to select this as a muzzle flash the P Murdoch spread shot click the little arrow and I'm going to use the spread impact for the impact effects once again click the little arrow so it puts it in the right place okay I think we have it set up for now there's no uh, sound effects included in these packs unfortunately so I'm not putting in fire sounds but if you have a sound you can plug it in over here okay let's save and close this down and now we're going back to our character blueprint and we're going to make some changes in here first we're going to add a bunch of weapon variables again so open the weapon verse and let's duplicate a bunch of those we're going to start with is firing that's a boolean so that's fine the next one we're going to add is CW spread this one is going to be the float the next one we're adding is CW rechamber This one is going to be a boolean, and the next one is CW rechamber time, and this one is going to be a float, so make sure you enter it as a float. The next one is our CW max total range, and that's also a float, so that's fine. Next, we're going to add a few booleans again, so duplicate this one it's called is in fire cycle the next boolean we're going to add is called is rechamber and the next one is called is reloading like so then we're going to add an integer so we're going to call this one burst shot count burst shot count and we're going to set this to an integer and now we're going to add our CW muzzle it's going to be a name variable and we're going to set this to replicate so in the details panel on the right look for replication and turn on replicated like this and we want to do this for the next ones as well so just duplicate the muzzle one and we're going to call this CW fire sound make sure it's replicated and we're going to set this to a sound wave particle uh, sorry object reference so sound wave object reference the next one we're adding is our CW muzzle flash also make sure this is replicated and make this a particle system object reference so particle system object reference and the last one we're adding is our impact fx cw impact fx also make sure this is set to replicated and that's also a particle system object reference so that's fine like so now we're going to make sure we're going to populate these variables first we need to make one change to a variable we already had so look over here for the weapon inventory names select this and make sure you also turn on replication for this one so replication replicated and now we're going to go into our set active weapon variables function over here double click it and you notice we have all these empty pins right now because we added this stuff to our info structure and we're going to set the new variables for those so just drag them in in the correct order let's start off with the CW spread the rechamber rechamber time max total range we don't need these ones so we're going to continue with the CW muzzle socket the fire sound the muzzle flash and the impact effects let's line this up a little bit better
and connect them up to the outputs. Just like this. Also connect up all the execution pins. Make sure you don't forget any. Now on a little side note, you can tell all the variables that replicate have these two little white circles over here. It's just a little quick little uh, thingy that shows you you turned on replication for those variables. Okay, so we have everything connected up like so. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the server version of this function. So look for server set active weapon variables. And in this one, we're only going to set our replicated variables. So the CW muzzle, the CW fire sound, the CW muzzle flash, and the CW impact effects. And we want to connect those up to the out results connect them up to each other and connect the row found pin to the first setter just like this so now the server also knows about these replicated variables so that's fine compile and save this let's get rid of the default stuff compile it again that should be fine. The next thing we are going to do is add another keybind for our primary attack event. So let's go to Edit Project Settings. And we're going to go to our Input section, Action Mappings, and we're going to click the little plus sign over here. We're going to call this new Action Mapping Primary Attack. And I'm going to assign the left mouse button for this. left mouse button and close it down now go back to the character blueprint and go to the event graph let me close this down so first let's look for our new event event primary attack and we're going to create two custom events for this custom event the first one is going to be called primary attack pressed And the second one is going to be called primary attack released. And we're going to call those events from this. So let's look for primary attack, a primary attack pressed, and for the release to do primary attack released. Just like this. Now the released one is going to be very simple. We're just going to set our is firing variable back to false. So drag in is firing and set it to false, just like this. And that's done already. So drag it over to the side. And now we're going to actually make our primary attack function. This is going to be a little bit more work. So stay focused over here. First, we're going to start off by adding a branch. So hold B and click and connect it up. And we want to know if we are not sprinting, not reloading, and not already firing. So we're going to drag in our is sprinting. We're going to drag in is reloading. And we're going to drag in is firing. And the is in fire cycle as well. Drag off one of these and type end and boolean and we're going to click this little plus sign so we end up with four pins and connect them up all four like so then we want to drag off here and type not so if we are not doing any of this stuff and plug it into the condition and we have our first branch set up if we are not reloading not sprinting and not already firing next we need another branch so hold b again and click and we're going to connect this to the true pin for this one we want to know if we are not firing a special weapon so 
drag in our CW weapon type, drag off this and do equal. And we want to know if this is not a special weapon, so uh, let's let's delete this one. This doesn't really make any sense. Drag off this and do the exclamation mark, not equal, and type in special. So if our CW weapon type is not special, if it's not a special weapon, and we're going to check one more thing, and that's if we have any ammo in our clip. So from the true, connect up another branch, and for this we want to know if our CW ammo clip, and that's an array, so we need to get the correct entry of that, so drag off this and get a, get a copy. We want to know what's in our active weapon slot, so drop it right on top of here. And we want to know if this is greater than uh, zero, so integer greater than integer, and plug it into the condition like so. If we have ammo in our clip. Just like this. So if all of this is true, we can actually fire our weapon. So we're going to start off by setting is firing to true. We're going to set the is in fire cycle to true as well. And we're going to set our burst shot count to zero to start off with. So drag in all three of those and connect them up. Uh, connect them to the true pin of the previous branch, so make sure it's connected like this. Set is firing to true, set is in fire cycle to true, and leave the burst shot count to zero, that's okay. Now we're going to need to call a new function, so we're going to create that quickly. Click the little plus sign over here for the functions and call this fire bullet. And we want to give this function one input, so over here click the little plus sign, call this shot count, and make sure it's an integer, like so. Just compile this and go back to your event graph. After the burst shot count set to zero, we want to call our fire bullet event, so drag it in like this. And we want to fill in our CW shot count for the shot count, so drag it on top of here, just like this. The next thing we want to do is call a delay, so drag off this and look for the delay node, and we want to plug in our CW fire delay in here, so drag in our fire delay and drop it right on top of here. And after that we need to do another branch check again, so hold B and click in an empty spot to create a new branch, connect it up, and we want to know if we still have ammo in our clip after we fired this first shot, and if we are not sprinting or reloading in the meantime. So first let's drag off the CW ammo clip again, get a copy. We want to know what's in our active weapon slot, so plug it in here. And we want to know if this is greater than zero, so integer greater than integer. Drag off this and type end boolean. And we want to know if we are not sprinting and if we are not reloading. Drag in both of those, drag off them and look for not. And connect them up to the end as well, and plug it into the condition, just like this. If we still have ammo and are not sprinting, sprinting, or reloading. Like so. After this branch, we are going to continue in a few different ways. First, let's go from the true branch over here. So we're going to set our burst shot count, drag in burst shot count while holding Alt, connect this up to the true pin, 
and we want to set it to our current burst shot count plus one so drag it in do plus integer and connect them up like this so we're adding one to our current burst count let me check my notes real quick and right now we're going to add another branch connect it up like this and we want to know if our fire type is burst so drag in our CW fire type drag off this and look for equal and just type burst in here if our fire type is burst and our burst shot count so we're going to look for and boolean and we want to know if our current burst shot count is smaller than smaller than integer smaller than our CW shot count and we're going to connect it up to the end plug this into the condition if we are firing a burst so that's for a burst weapon next we want to continue by dragging off this false branch and add another branch so create a branch connect it up to the false over here and for this one we want to know if our fire type is automatic so just copy it like so if cw fire type is auto and so get the end node and we want to know if we still have our fire button pressed down so if is firing is true and we are not sprinting and not reloading so drag in sprinting and reloading for the sprinting and reloading connect up the not boolean and just plug everything into the end node by adding a few pins like so so if our fire type is automatic we still have our fire button pressed down and we are not sprinting and we are not reloading we're going to continue shooting our weapon so how are we going to do that we're going to loop back so from this true branch over here if we're firing a burst we're going to go back to our fire bullet event so drag it all the way back here fire bullet now let's add some reroute nodes to make this look a little bit cleaner no just like this and if we're firing an automatic weapon we also going to loop back to the fire bullet and you can just connect it to the reroute route reroute node like this so we have our loops in place if we are firing auto just like this now let me double check my notes real quick let's go back to this branch over here where we have our false pin still unconnected so if we still have ammo in our clip and not reloading or sprinting right after the fire delay we're going to drag off this and we want to set our uh, no we want to create another branch in here so drag off this and look for another branch from here we want to know if we are firing a rechambering weapon or not so just drag in the rechamber onto the condition like so and from this we're going to go two ways again no. if we are firing a rechamber weapon we're going to set our is rechamber to true because at this point we want to start the rechamber state so set this to true after that we're going to add a delay node and the delay is going to be our rechamber time so plug it into the duration like this and once that done once that's done we're going to set rechambering back to false 
and we're going to set is firing back to false and we're also going to set is in fire cycle back to false connect these up and make sure they're all set to false again and if we're not firing a rechambering weapon we're going to add another branch over here because we want to know if we are firing a burst weapon or not so we're going to drag in our CW fire type again drag off this and do equal over here type burst and plug it into the condition if we are firing a burst weapon we want to add a delay node and we want to wait for our burst delay so look for the CW burst delay and plug it in and after that we simply want to set is firing and is in fire cycle back to false again so just copy and paste those plug them in like this and also plug in the false pin so if we're not firing a burst weapon we're not having a delay and we're going to reset them immediately so the reason we have an is in fire cycle and an is firing is because we reset this when we release our attack button so if we release the mouse button we're actually setting it back to false so this makes our delays not work if we are not adding another boolean so that's why we have two of those so this should pretty much do it for our primary attack event I think let me quickly double check my notes I think this should work so at this point we're going to go to our new fire bullet function let's open this up and we're going to create a local variable in here so if we scroll down all the way to the bottom on the left side we have our local variables just click a little plus sign and we're going to call this pellet count and that's going to be an integer like so now this local variable only exists inside this function so you can't use it in the event graph it, it's only here so it's local basically compile and save this the default value is zero so that's fine and we're going to start off our function here the first thing we're going to do is set array element and we're going to take one bullet out of our clip so we're going to set the target array of CW clip ammo clip sorry CW ammo clip drop it on the target array we want to have it for our active weapon slot so drag that on top of the index and we're going to uh, subtract one of it so first we need to get it get our CW ammo clip drag off this and do get a copy once again plug in the active weapon slot and from this we're going to drag off and do minus integer minus one so the current ammo clip minus one and we're going to plug it into the item just like this So that's going to take one bullet out of our clip. The next thing we're going to do, drag off this and do play the sound at location. And we're going to drag in our CW fire sound in here. So drag it right on top of the sound. No, just like this. For the location, you want to right click and type self, get a reference to self, drag off this and do get location no. get actor location and you want to plug in the actor location into the location from the fire sound just like this that should do it for that now we're going to go to our event graph quickly and we're going to create a few custom events so find an empty spot right click and create a custom event the first one is going to be called server muzzle flash so we're going to call this SVR muzzle flash we want to make sure this is replicated to run on the server and you could make it reliable 
that's a decision you need to make if you want your muzzle flashes to be reliable. You definitely don't want to turn reliable on for everything, so I'm just going to leave it off right now. The next thing we're going to create another custom event and we're going to call this MC Muzzle Flash. And this is going to be a multicast. So we're going to go to the replicate and we're going to select multicast. Once again, you can turn on reliable, but that's a decision you need to make yourself. So we have our two new custom events and we'll go back to our fire bullet function. From here, we want to know if we have authority or not. So has authority. If we are the server, we're going to call the multicast event, so MC muzzle flash. And if we are a client, we're going to call the server muzzle flash. Just like this. Now the reason for this, a multicast event, if we click on this and we read it, executes on all if it's called from the server. So only a server can call a muzzle flash event, a multicast event. So if we are the server, we can directly call this. If we are a client, we need to first make it replicate to the server. And from the server, we can then call our multicast. So go back to the fire bullet function. After this, we want to add a branch. So hold B and click and connect these up like so. And for this branch, we want to know if we have a shot count that's greater than zero and if we are firing a shotgun. So let's drag in our CW weapon type. Drag off this and look for equal. Over here, type shotgun. And we're going to drag off this and look for end boolean. And we want to know if the shot count, so drag off the shot count from the input. And we want to know if that's greater than zero. So if we have a shot count entered in our info structure or not, and if we fire a shotgun. Plug it into the condition. So if this is true, we're going to set the current pellet to the current pellet plus one. So drag in the current pellet from the local variables, connect it up to the true pin, get a getter for it as well, add one to it, integer plus integer and plug it into the setter. Next thing we need to do is going to create a new function again. So we're going to scroll up to the left to the function section, click the little plus sign and we're going to create a bullet trace function. This one is going to have one output, so in the outputs click the little plus sign and we're going to call this out hits. And this is going to be an array of hit results. So over here look for hit result. Click this and click the little sign over here and turn it into an array, like so. Now we can go back to the fire bullet function. So compile this and go back to the fire bullet function. And we want to call this bullet trace function. So drag it in and plug it into the execution like so. Now we're going to create another function again. So click the little plus sign and we're going to call this bullet hit event. This one is going to have one input. So click the little plus sign over here, it's going to be a hit result, that's fine, but it's not going to be an array, it's called going to be a single variable, so change it back to a single variable and call this a hit result, like so. Compile this and once again go back to the fired bullet function. And now we want to create a for each loop. If we hold F on our keyboard and we click in an empty spot, we get a for each loop. Connect this to the execution pin. Connect the out hits array to the array over here. And for the loop body, we want to call our bullet hit event function. So we're just going to drag it in like so. Connect it up to the loop body and connect the array element to the hit result like so. 
So for every entry in our our array, we're going to call the bullet hit event with the specified result. Once that's done, we're going to continue execution. So we're going to add another branch over here, plug in the completed, like so. And we want to know if our current pellet, so drag in the local variable, the current pellet, drag off this and look for equal. And we want to know if that's equal to our CW shot count. So if it is, we need to stop firing. If it's not, we're going to fire another pellet. So connect this up to the condition like so. If this is false, we're going to loop back to the set current pellet. So we're going to loop back to here. And let's make that look a little bit better by adding a reroute node. Like so. And if it's false, we're going to simply stop execution because we're done firing the shot. So that's the shotgun branch, basically. And now we're going to do the normal one. So we're going to drag off the false pin over here. Oh. Drag off the false pin. And we're going to call our bullet trace function again. So call the bullet trace. Once again, we're going to add a for each loop, so hold F and click in an empty spot. Connect up the execution pin and the array. And for the loop body, we're going to call our bullet hit event again. So drag it onto here and connect it up like this. So that should do it for the normal one. Let me double check if I got everything done here. Yes, that should work. So that's fine. We got this function done. We're going to close this down. Let's compile it. Why not? The next thing we're going to do is our bullet trace function. So this is going to actually do the bullet traces and determine if we hit something or not. So first we want to know where we are shooting at. So we're going to do a line trace by channel. Drag off the entry node and do line trace by channel. This one. We're going to start our line trace by getting the location of our camera. So drag in the camera, hold control, drag off the camera and type get world location. And we're going to plug in the world, world location into the start of our trace. For the end of the trace, we want to get the forward vector of our camera. So Let's drag off the camera again and type get forward vector. We want to multiply this. So drag off this, type multiply vector multiplied by float. And we want to multiply this by 100,000. So plug in 100,000 over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we're going to plug it into the end result just like this. And for the actors to ignore, we want to ignore ourselves. So right click in an empty spot, type self to get a reference to self. We want to turn this into an array. So drag off this and look for make array. And after we did that, we can plug it into our actors to ignore over here. From this, we're going to drag off the out hit and we're going to break it, like so. And we're going to continue from here by doing a multi-line trace by channel. So this is where we actually shoot. Let me look for it first. Multi-line trace by channel. This one. So this line trace we're using to determine what we're actually looking at and we're determining the point we're shooting at. From this trace we're actually firing the bullet from the muzzle to this point. So if we set it up like this we know we're always shooting at the exact center of the screen and we're not worried about where our follow camera is at and if we change the position of our follow camera our aim is going to be off and things like that. This will always work. So, for the multi-line trace by channel, for the start, we want to get the socket location. So, we're going to right-click in an empty spot and we're going to type get socket location. 
and we want to get it on the mesh. So look for get socket location mesh. For the socket name, we're going to plug in our CW muzzle. So look for CW muzzle and plug it into the muzzle socket, just like this. Now this vector is going to be the start of our line trace, so plug it into the start over here. Now for the end, it's going to be a tiny bit more complicated. We're first going to look for the get unit direction, so get unit direction vector. For this, we're going to use the same vector as the socket location to start from, so we're going to plug it into here. And we're going to trace to the location we hit in our first trace, so we're going to plug that into the 2. Now, from this, we're going to apply our spread as well. So, we're going to get a random unit vector cone in radians. So, right click again and type random unit vector. No. And you want to get the random unit vector cone in radians, this one. For the cone there, you can drag in this result. And for the cone half angle in radians, we can use our spread variable. So we're going to drag in our CW spread. I'm going to divide this by 10, just so we can use a bit more uh, sensible values in our infrastructure. So it's just a correction. I'm going to plug this in here. So we have our spread applied now. And we need a little bit more room, so drag this off to the side once more. Once again, we're going to multiply this vector, so drag off this and look for vector times float. And this time we're going to multiply it by a million. So drag in a one with six zeros, just like so. This is going to be the end point of our trace, so plug it into the end. Now we only need to connect up the out hits to the out hits return node and connect up the execution pin. And right now we can fire our weapon. So that's done. The next thing we need to do is set up our bullet hit event. Let's compile and save this. And we're going to close this down and look for the bullet hit event. At this point we're only going to play an impact of X. So first we're going to add a branch over here. And we're going to check if the impact is actually inside the range of our weapon. So we're going to break the hit result as well. And we want to know if the distance is smaller than, so float smaller than float. And we want to know if it's smaller than our max total range. Plug it into the condition like this. So if it's smaller, we're going to continue. If it's not smaller, it's actually out of the range of this weapon, so we're not going to do anything. So from the true pin over here, we are going to get the custom events. I think we need to create those first. Yeah, we didn't do that. So go back to the event graph once more. And we're going to create custom events for our impact effects. So right click in an empty spot, create a new custom event, call this one server play impact fx. And we're going to set this to run on server and you could set it to re reliable, but that's your decision. Again, we're going to create another custom event and we're going to call this MC play impact fx. So this is the multicast version. So for this one, set replication to multicast. And these ones are going to need two inputs. So click the little plus sign over here. We're going to call the first one location. This is going to be a vector. And we're going to add the rotation as well. And that's also going to be a vector, so that's fine. Let's do the same thing for our multicast. Let's plug in the location and also add the rotation, both vectors, like so. At this point, we can go back to our bullet hit event, and we want to know if we have authority or not, so we're going to drag off the false pin over here. Uh, let me double check. 
if the distance is smaller than our max total weight. Sorry, we're going to drag off the true pin over here. And we want to know if we have authority. If we have authority, we're going to call our multicast impact effects. So MC play impact effects. And if we are a client, we're going to call our server impact effects. Now plug in the location and the rotation from the hit result. So location, location, and use the normal as the rotation. Like this. And for now, that's all we're going to do in our bullet hit event. We can expand this later on by applying damage and adding decals and uh, bullet impacts and stuff like that. But for now, this should do fine. So let's compile and save this. And we're going back to our event graph and we're going to set up the events for FX. Uh, let me see. Let me scroll down in my notes a little bit. For the impact FX, let's start off with this one. So the server version is going to call the multicast. So drag off the server play impact FX and look for multicast play impact FX and just plug in the location and the rotation like so. And for the multicast play impact FX, we want to just spawn an emitter at location. So drag off this and do spawn emitter at location. We want to spawn it at this location. We can actually drag in the rotation like this and it will create a rotation from our vector. And we were, want to drag in the impact of X from here into our emitter template, just like this. So that's the multicast for our impact of X. Next, we're going to do our muzzle flash. So let me comment this, play impact of X. And for this, we're going to do the same thing. So from the server muzzle flash, we're going to call our multicast muzzle flash. And from the multicast muzzle flash, we're going to spawn an emitter at location again. And for this time, we want to drag in our CW muzzle flash for the emitter template. And we want to get our muzzle location so we're going to right click here and we're going to type get socket transform the get socket transform and once again we want to get it from our mesh so get socket transform mesh the socket name we're going to plug in our CW muzzle we're going to leave this to RTS world that's fine we're going to drag this to the side a little bit and we're going to break this, break transform. And now we can simply plug in the location and the rotation like so. And that should do it for our muzzle flash. So we're going to put a comment around this as well. Play muzzle flash like this. Now at this point, if we did everything correctly, we should have a firing weapon. So let's compile this and let's check it out in game. So this is going to be our semi-auto weapon. And as you can see, it's firing. It has a muzzle flash. It has an impact effect. And we can actually fire. If I switch to my spread shot, I'm firing with a different muzzle flash and I'm firing spread. So as you can see, my impact of X changes and I also have my AR and I can fire in an automatic weapon. So all of that seems to be working. That's pretty cool. But as you notice, I have a pretty awkward viewpoint and I can't really see where I'm shooting at and I can't see my muzzle flashes and stuff. So I'm going to go to my viewport and I'm going to change my view camera. I'm just going to drag it up about 100 units like so and I'm going to rotate it a little bit just a little bit downward and just a little bit no I think I'm just going to try it like this first mm, 
Yeah, that's a little bit better. Just let me put it to the side a little bit. So I'm going to drag it off to the right, about 30 units, and I'm going to turn it inwards a little bit as well. Compile and save this. So now we can see a little bit better where we are actually shooting at. And we can see our muzzle flash and we can see our impact effects. And if we fire the spread shot, you can see it's a totally different impact effect. So that's pretty much working the way it should. Now to show you the bullet trace function, you can go to the bullet trace over here. And if you look for the multi-line trace by channel, and if you do the draw debug type and set it to the duration, you can actually see your bullet traces. So you can see your spread and how you're firing and where your aim is. So if I'm firing like this, you can see the trace that's being applied, where it hits, and you can see I'm actually shooting in the exact same position every time, except for my spread. If I fire my shotgun, you can see it's firing 18 shots at the same time because we set the shot count to 18. And if I fire my automatic rifle, you can see a nice little spread cone. So everything is working in here. So we made our weapon shoot. That's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> I'm sorry for my language there. Um, I think this is going to do it for this video. In the next video we're going to expand on some stuff and we're going to make everything work a little bit better so we can reload our weapon and we can add other weapon types and stuff like that. So thanks for watching guys and see you next time. Later.